back, everyone. We're here at CPAC, sitting down with James O'Keefe of Project Veritas. James, real pleasure having you on. Josh, great to be with you. So, James, of course, you do you do these undercover investigative reports, and one of the big things you jumped into now is actually going after media directly. You filed yes. this lawsuit against New York Times. Why don't you tell us about filed that? Filed a defamation against the New York Times and New York Supreme Court. Here's what happened. Uh, we did a story in Minneapolis uh, showing Somalians in Ilhan Omar's district giving money in exchange for ballots. It was so incontrovertible. There were dozens of ballots on this guy's lap, and, and they were and they were bragging about how they were breaking the law. And they didn't care. We do this story, huge story in October, November, you may recall it. The New York Times runs an article that says, video by Project Veritas is part of a misinformation campaign, experts say. The New York Times cited Stanford researchers who said that we were part of this disinformation effort. We sue the New York Times for defamation. Uh, we're getting to motion to dismiss, and they filed a document where they cited Wikipedia, and they said they already corrected certain things that they originally said in the article, they've now updated in their motions. So we believe, Josh, that uh, it's time to go on offense. Uh, we're going to start suing these places. CNN has lied about us. Brian Stelter lied about me last week. Uh, Fidelity, which is a banking institution, has told our donors that I'm under criminal investigation. That's false. That's in Texas. Uh, we're going to start suing all of these people. And the reason why is obviously it's actual malice. You can't defame someone. But also, in the discovery process of litigation, you, you force them to answer questions under oath. That is videotaped. That is content as if we went into their institutions with a hidden camera. So we look forward to deposing the head of the New York Times, Brian Stelter, Anna Cabrera, uh, all of the folks that have defamed Project Veritas. The only thing they understand, Josh, is power. So we look forward to seeing them in court. And we're seeing a lot more happening with this on the grassroots level now. It seems that you know the, the feeling here at CPAC is grassroots. And President Trump himself, again, has announced his office of the former president. And interestingly, something in your wheelhouse, he mentioned that he's going to be engaging in community organizing. And this is significant for those of us who know Saul Alinsky. Can you tell us a bit about the significance of community organizing uh, with Trump now? Well, um, you know, I, I was in college and I read Rules for Radicals. That was one of the first things that sort of got me activated. People think that Alinsky is a communist or, you know, an ideologue. I don't, I don't think that. I've read his books. I, I think he's just a tactician. A lot of his tactics are, are ideologically neutral. He talks about power and community organizing. And, you know, we did that story into ACORN. Barack Obama considered himself a community organizer. What Linsky says is there's two ways to get power, uh, through people or money. And if you have no money, the only way to power is through people. So a lot of these community organizers believe in organizing people. Labor movement is what Alinsky was involved in. So I think a lot of what uh, Alinsky is about is, 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 is empowerment, getting power. He also talks about making them live up to their own book of rules and, uh, and uh, exposing hypocrisy. Again, I don't think these are, these are left-wing tenants. What Trump's talking about is something a, a tale as old as time, but conservatives have never been very good at organizing people, in my estimation. Maybe, maybe it's more about because of their individualism or their capitalist tendencies, or they're not as mission-driven as some of the folks that Linsky is surrounded. So I'm not surprised by, by Trump's comments, and uh, more power to him. Now, this is an interesting direction because, as you mentioned, you know, it's time to go on the offense, as you said it. I see yourself, a lot of other people here actually filing lawsuits against media organizations that are committing defamation, that are, you know, claiming that others are spreading misinformation, but are now being sued yes. for themselves committing defamation through those, these same, you know, narratives, essentially. And now we see this community organizing push. I'm curious, what do you think the future is of all this? Where is this all heading? I think we, well, you know, I'm biased towards what we're doing, obviously, but I, I think we need to create a movement of these people. We have to inspire people. I think, you know, a lot of eyes are on what we're about to do or what we're doing. But if, but if Josh, if, if, if a videotape of cash in exchange for ballots is considered misinformation, that's about the most Orwellian thing I've, and that's beyond George Orwell. That, that's craziness. So that, that concerned me and I, I realized I had no other option. It was a choiceless choice. My lawyers inform me it's going to cost millions of dollars to get to a jury verdict. But we will win. We will win because we can't settle. We don't settle. And I think a lot of the problems that media organizations have had, I know Fox News is being sued by Dominion. I've read the complaint. I don't think it's, it's a meritorious case. I don't think there's actual malice. But a lot of big, big corporations tend to settle. I've never, I don't settle litigation, which means we go all the way. 
We go through discovery, and in the discovery process of the litigation, the interrogatories, the depositions, that's what they're afraid of, Josh. They don't, Dean Baquet, head of the New York Times, does not want to sit in a chair under oath and be forced to answer questions. Maybe the, one of the first times that they're completely honest, actually. So I look forward to that. Great, James, just last question. Uh, what's next for Project Veritas? What do you guys, you know, what's on the agenda? I mean, we had six, six whistleblowers here at CPAC. We're going to have 25 uh, next year. We're going to have a couple whistleblowers a month. And these are brave people. They're, 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 they're losing, I mean, the, the, the power of the human spirit to lose your job for the public's right to know. There's nothing more inspirational than watching them on the stage like that. It, it, it certainly fuels me to keep me going. Everyone's reaching out to us right now. Thousands of people want to wear cameras. So we're just trying to create a movement of those people and inspire people that the truth is the most important thing, that, that truth matters in and of itself. And everything is downstream from that. So that's where we're headed. Hey, James O'Keefe, real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thank you.